uh, semester, we talked about the Arab League. Do you remember it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And now we are going to have it in deep and we are going to have a quiz about it. So it's really important to focus about it. What, who can remind me, what does it mean Arab League? What does it mean League? Hmm. I forgot. It's what? How my girls? What does it mean, Arab League? Um, it's like all the Arab countries, like. Excellent. And how many countries like, do we have? Arabian countries, Maria? Do you remember? No, I like. I'm. Twenty-three. Yes, excellent. We have twenty-two or twenty-three. Just let me. Twenty-one, actually. We have twenty-one Arabian countries. Twenty-one Arabian countries. Hi, Miss. Hi. How are you? Good. So we have. We have to take Arab leagues again. I know, but the first semester we didn't take a quiz about it. Right now it's inside the quiz, so it's important to have it. Okay? Miss Taibun uh, will have the quiz. We will have it, inshallah, not, not the next week, the week after it. We will have social okay. and English quiz, inshallah. Okay. Okay, so it's important that you focus on it. Okay, the Arab League. The Arab League, which means that the group of all the Arabian countries that are what that are um, grouped together in one place, which means that the Arab League, it means that the group of all the Arabian countries and they gather in one place. Why they gather in one place every year? Because they want to discuss all the benefits between them and how they can grow the trade between them, how they can grow the um, uh, the security between them, how they can grow the tourism between them. So there's a lot of benefit between each country and another. So imagine if you have another country that talks with the same language that you talk with, another country have the same religion that you have uh, with, which is Islam. And in the same time, we have they have similar people to each other. So that's why we need a league or we need a group for us to collect all of us in one place so, so we can what? So we can interact together. So we can exchange the experience. We can exchange uh, the knowledge. We can exchange also the money. We can exchange also uh, also the trading and every type of benefit. We can exchange it together. And in the same time, we can also unite together. So if any other enemy from the outer places and the, the outer countries try to attack us, we can what? We can defend ourselves and we can help each other. Without being a group, then if you are alone, you will be so weak. So that's why, this is why we have the idea of creating the Arab League. Babe, if we go for your books on the page 74, in the student book, go to your book and open the page 74. Okay, this is the page 74 in your book. You will find this. You will find this flag of the Arabian, of the Arabian uh, Arab League. So, Arab League flag. Okay, this is the Arab League flag. It is what it is a green flag that has in the middle what two olive branch. And then the name of Jamaat al-Dual Arabiya, which means Arab League, okay? But why does it have the green color and the white color? Why? Hmm. What do you think? Um, um, the green, it's, it's supposed to be what? The green, it's supposed to be that all of these countries have the green color, which means fertile soil fertile soil and it is the color also of the peace the color of the peace also the olive branch are what are a resemblance of peace and then we have the chain right here a chain it every one every single yes, I know. yes tell me the chain there's 21 circles on the chain because there's 21 peaks Excellent. so the chain has 21 parts that represent 21 countries each one of these parts represent a country and then the green color it represents the peace of these countries that we love each other and we have peace 
between each other. And these are the countries that we have in the Arab League. We have Bahrain, we have Jordan, we have Morocco, we have Sudan, we have Kuwait, we have Oman, Iraq, and this is, doesn't appear very well, just a minute. Yes, we have uh, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, Qatar, and Somalia. We have Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Libya, Iraq, Bahrain, Kuwait, Mauritania, Sudan, Syria, Lebanon, Oman, Palestine, Yemen, and Comoros and Djibouti. Comoros means Jezreel al Qamar and Djibouti. Those are the Arabian countries that we have. There are 21 countries. <clears throat> okay, let's go for the page 71. Who wants to read? Me, Amal! 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 Okay, let's go first. Let's go first with... Amal! Jude, Jude, are you there? Do you have the book? Miss, she's not here. You don't have the sound. Okay. What about yeah. you? Yeah, Jenna, Jenna. Maria, Maria. Miss, I'm Jenna, Okay, page 74, right? Open the page 74 and start read. Okay, discussion one. What might the colors represent? Two, what might the job re respond? Respondibility? Responsibilities? Responsibilities? Responsibilities of such a... A league? League B. Mm -hmm. Three, who are it, its members? Mm -hmm. The Arab League, or what is also called the League of Arab sta States, states, Ta states. States. Mm -hmm. is a regional organiz organization, 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 organization which has different Arab countries as its member members. There are 21 Arab countries that are cons cons consider consider considered, considered today as members, while four countries play the role of observe, 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 observers, observers, observers. Mm -hmm. observers. Such a, a league has one main target, which is to con Con take, con connect mm -hmm. the country of the Arab nation together and keep them sever, sever, sever again, sever again, and safe by resolving their main problems or disputes and protecting their in Enter. interests. Excellent, Jenna. Okay, this is the, uh, the Arabian, Arabian leagues or Arab leagues on the map. These are our all Arabian countries. Here, starting from Mauritania, and then we have here Morocco, then we have Algeria, Tunisia, then Libya, uh, and then have we have uh, Egypt, and then Sudan, and then Palestine right here, and then Jordan right here, Syria, Lebanon right here, and Iraq right here, Saudi Arabia, and then Kuwait, the small country right here. And then we have here Qatar, the small dot right here. And then Bahrain right here. And Emirat is here. Then Oman, then Yemen. And this is Somalia and Djibouti. And Jazar al-Qamar right here. Okay. These are the Arab leagues, the whole Arabian uh, countries. And as you can see, all of them are near of each other. So it's really important to have what? To have a community for us or a league for us or a group for us. Why? Because as I told you, the, the people, when they are united, they can what? They can defeat any other country when they come to, uh, to concur us. But if we are alone, even if you are a strong country, if you are alone, you can defend yourself. So we need to defend each other, to resolve the problems for each other, and also to give the benefits for each other. Then we can grow together as a whole league. Okay. Then uh, right now, some of the, we have 21 countries. We have 21 countries right here inside the league. Four of these countries are working as observers. What does it mean observers? Yani, if there's any problem between two countries, one country in the middle 
uh, it will come and uh, it will say that I will help to resolve this problem. Like for example, there was a problem between uh, between Sudan and uh, Egypt uh, before some years ago, and Saudi Arabia entered that uh, thing to what to resolve the problem between Sudan and between Egypt. Also, uh, uh, before some years ago, there was conflict between Kuwait and Iraq. So the Arabian countries also try to interfere to resolve that problem. So this is the importance of having a league to defend ourselves and also to help ourselves financially and educationally and uh, in security. I want you to go for the next page 75 and I need somebody to read again. Me, Maria, Maria, get me. Amal. Are you there, Amal? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's your turn. Where and when was this league founded? Go. The league was first founded in Egypt in 1945 with six countries as members. Mm -hmm. Egypt, Iraq, Trans Transjordan, Jordan today, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Syria. In the following years, other countries started joining until all Arab countries became members who have the right to vote in the league. The, observe, the observers are Brazil, Eritrea, Venezuela, and India. They do not have any right to vote, but they just observe the work pre performed by the member states, give their opinions and participate in general activities organized by league. Okay, excellent. That's enough. Right now, <clears throat> as I told you, my girls, in this Arab leagues, it was founded at which year it was founded in 1945. The first countries to join that league was Iraq, Jordan, and Egypt, and Syria. Okay, and then later on, many countries joined after that. So we have the first countries to start that league was Iraq, and then Jordan, and then Egypt, Mm -hmm. And then we have also Saudi Arabia. Lebanon. And Syria. Okay, these are the six countries that the Arab leagues started with. At which year it started? It started at... It started at what? 19... 45, 1945. Okay, it started at 1945. In the following years, it started with six countries, but the following years, uh, witness more countries to join that league until we have 21 countries right now. Now, after they have 21 countries, we said that there are four observers, countries, Four countries observe what observe the meeting of those Arab leagues. There will be four countries. Who are those countries? <clears throat> Amazingly, those countries, they are not Arabian countries. One of them is Brazil. The other one is Eritrea. Eritrea is African uh, country and Brazil from South America continent. And then we have also Venezuela. And then we have India. Four countries, none of them is Arabian, and none of them is Muslim. They are all what, they are the observers of the Arab League observers. I will call them observers. What does it mean observers? They are the one that come to the meetings of the Arab Leagues just to observe what's going on and if there's any conflict between the countries they try to mediate as what as a medium country between them to ref to resolve the problems those are the observers okay maria 
Mariel, get me. Are you there? Yes. Okay, I want you to complete reading. Economy of the Arab League. Because the Arab League it extends all over the all over Arab countries and Africa and Asia, it is it is a it is rich and in resources. The economy of the Arab countries is rich in oil and natural gas gas, which are found in many different member states. One important resource is the fertile lands found in Sudan, which gave it, it the name the, of food basket, basket of the Arab nation. Tourism is also one major resource in the flourishing economy in the Arab world with Egypt, Tun Tunisia, and Jordan leading the way. Telecommunications is the industry that has been developed developing steadily in the Arab world and competing with nations worldwide. It also gives a push forward to the economy of these nations. Nice reading, Maria. Thank you so much. So economy of Arab uh, League. Now we want to learn what is the economy of this country and how they are surviving and from where they have the money to do their what to do their uh, their lives and to do the life of the population that they have. One thing that is very uh, is very rich in these countries is the resources. What does it mean? As you know, my girls, we have a 21 Arabian countries and these country where they exist, they exist here. At the north of Africa, this is the continent of Africa. Most of the Arabian countries, they are at the north of Africa. What does it exist in the north of Africa? We have Mediterranean Sea right here, the Bahr al-Mutawassir. We have here the Red Sea, the Bahr al-Ahmar from Sudan and Egypt and Saudi Arabia. And we have here what the Atlantic Ocean right here, okay? And the north of Africa is one of the best places. Why? Because we have the Nile River right here. It comes in Sudan and in Nile. That thing make those countries really rich. Rich with what? Those countries rich with fertile soil. Those countries are rich with tourism uh, places like Algeria and Tunisia, for example. And Saudi Arabia and the Arabian, the Gulf and countries like Iraq, or Kuwait, or Bahrain, or, or, or Oman, or Emirates, or Qatar, they are full with what? With oil. Black oil. We call it black gold. Why? Because these countries are the most countries that have oil all over the world, which means all of this area, the Arabian area, is one of the richest place, places over the world and over the universe. That's why all the other countries have somewhat, have some uh, reasons why to be here and why they want our countries. Why? Because our countries are full with rich resources and other resources that everybody needs. Those countries are full with food, full of oil, full of rivers, full of, of uh, good um, good weather that makes uh, growing the crops and the food here is very easy. For example, like in Lebanon, in Syria, Iraq, Palestine, Egypt even, all of them are one of the best agricultural countries, all of them. And they provide the need uh, uh, the need food, the needy food for other countries all over the world. So there's a lot of resources that we have. We have oil, we have tourism, we have also rivers like the Nile River, and we have also a good economy that we can establish for the other countries. So we have a lot of resources that make us rich. One of them is oil. Another thing, fertile soil. Another thing is tourism. Does tourism bring a lot of money? Yes, plenty of money. Actually, millions of dollars each year for each country. Like, for example, if you go for Jordan, Jordan rely on the tourism so much that it has more than 50 million each year in the Jordan economy. Jordan tourism. Let me show you. For example, this place, Al Petra alone, 
brings for Jordan more than 20 million for each year. You see, this is the tourists. They come right here and they wear, they wear the shemag and they try to be like the Arabs and they take some photos in there. It's, it's very uh, appealing for them to come to, this, to these areas because, because th those areas alone, they have more than 7,000 years old. Yeah? And this place is more than 7,000 years old, Al-Petra, Madinat Al-Batra. And it is in the middle of the desert. If you go, for example, for uh, Tunisia, This is Tunisia. If you go for Tunisia, you will find some ruins of what of the Roman people, Roman people who exist in in uh, Tunisia and Algeria. You will find also some of the Muslim ruins like Masjid Al Aqaba, Aqaba, uh, Masjid Al Aqaba Ibn You will find it in uh, Tunis, in Algeria. This is uh, some places of Tunisia. If you go for Tunisia, it's one of the most beautiful places over the world. If you go go there, all the places are white. And the windows are blue, like this. This is the country from inside. It's very, even their, their roads are really, really old. That's what's make it appealing for the, tour, the tourists to come to there and to see those places. So tourism is a really big resource for economy for those countries. Flip the page and go for next page. Somebody to, uh, wants to read? Huh, Tina, Tina. Tina, are you there? Yes. Okay, would you like to read? Okay, Juri. I don't have um, the book. Okay, Juri, would yes. you like to read, Juri? Okay. Okay. The, the, Arab, League, is the Arab League has an. Intervened in various in various issues. Various, since, various. various issues since it it's is established establishment. Some of these are school curricula curricula role. Role of women, child welfare, sports programs, especially for the youth, preserving preserving Arab cu cu culture, cultural heritage, heritage, launch literacy. Come, come begins come foster, fostering cultural exchanges among member states, chancel, translating, translating modern technical. Okay, that's enough. Thank you so much, Ya yeah, Juri. Now we are going to focus on the attributes and the things that the Arabian countries did together. Okay, these are some of the achievements that they did together. The first thing, the first thing we have is a school curricula, which means that all the schools all over the Arabian countries, they share the curricula. Curricula means the subject and the books we have. For example, one of the books that we are using from other countries is this book that you have between your hands. Now, social studies, this one. The book that you have is made in Jordan, this one. Okay, and now we have it in Saudi Arabia, we study it in Saudi Arabia. Why? Because we have social curricula achievement that is, uh, that is what shared between these countries. This is the first thing. Then we have rule of women. This is other thing that we share with the Arabian countries around us. Rule of women, which means that to make the woman able to work or to study because uh, since uh, a lot of years, maybe 200 years ago, some people, say, they said we don't want women to, to work or to study or anything. Miss so, Anne to drive. What? To drive too, because they or couldn't to drive, drive or anything. So a lot of people refused that until the Arabian countries, they agreed between each other to make the woman able to do stuff 
that they need, like, for example, to, um, to work or to study. Actually, even in Islam, Islam didn't say for the women, don't study. Uh, God said for both people, which is men and women, to study. Okay, because he said, Ladina Amanu. Ladina Amanu, which means men and women. So God didn't say this is a woman stay at home and don't go out and don't study, don't work. No. So the Arabian countries agree that women has to work and has to study if she likes. Then they also achieve what child well, welfare. Welfare, which means that all the childs around the world, they have the same... Uh, the same right to play and the same right to have their childhood, to go to education, to have education, to have a decent family and a decent house and a decent education. Another thing is sports programs, especially for the youth, which means that what that all the Arabian countries agree to have sports programs for the youth people. Youth, it means young, young people, Shabab. Then we have number five, preserving Arab cultural heritage which means that we have to maintain and to save our what? Our heritage, Arabian heritage. What does it mean heritage? Which means al-irth al-Arabi, which means what? Which means all the information that Arabian countries have. For example, our civilization, our culture, our books, our custom, even our wearing. Yani, for example, some of the people say, we don't want to wear thob or abaya anymore. This is old. No, we say this is one of our heritage, which means that this is it, this is the main of our culture. If you give it away, then you are giving away your culture. You can't do that. So we have to maintain and to preserve our heritage. Other thing is launching literacy company uh, campaigns. Launching, which means starting literacy campaigns. Literacy campaigns, which means that some campaigns that uh, encourage people to read and encourage people to write and encourage people to have books. And then number seven, one of the achievements also fostering cultural exchange among member states, which means that all the Arabian countries, if they have some cultural uh, information or cultural customs or something, we exchange it with other countries, like right now between Dubai or between uh, Saudi Arabia and Emirates. Whenever they have any expo, they invite Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia, they invite the Emiratis because we change cultural uh, things. Then we have the last thing we have is translating modern technical terminology to be used in the different member states, which means that if any, uh, if any uh, terminology or words that need to be translated from any other country, like for example, if you go for Al Jazair, you have the people of Amazigh, those people are living in Jazair. They have their own language. If they have some of the language uh, things that we don't know and we can benefit from it, then we will ask Algeria to translate their language for us. Okay? So the Arabian countries, they all translate the terminology, the, the technical terminology that they need from each other so we can benefit from each other. Finally, the Arab League has several smaller organizations that originated depending on the need, such as the Arab League Educational, Cultural, and Scientific Organization, ALESCO. ALESCO, it's organization under the Arab League. Nabil Arabi, the Secretary General of the Arab League since 2011. He was the, the Secretary of the Arab League. Now we have uh, someone different, by the way. His name is Ahmed Abu Ghid. He's different. Anyway, the Arab League, uh, the Arab League member states meet whenever the need for a meeting arises. The current speaker of the Arab parliament is the Kuwaiti leader, Ali Salim al-Dakbasi. Okay, this information, we took it before, that's why I went through it very quickly. Uh, and we said before that the Arab League, whenever they have the need to meet, they meet together and they ask for a meeting. And they make the meeting twice every year. But sometimes if any Arabian country ask for having a meeting, they will make it on the emergency situations. And this is the end of our lesson. Do you have any question, my girls? No. Okay, I hope no. you guys, I will see you next time, inshallah. Until then, stay safe and be okay. Bye.